Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, and welcome to Mind Body TV. I want to welcome everybody who's listening to the recording or to the podcast. Um, we are live every week at 11 a.m. Mountain, and I love when people join me live. I'm happy to answer your questions and incorporate your perspectives into what I'm sharing. Today, I'm going to be sharing about how to resolve anxiety and access your wisdom. Now, I am a physician. I'm board certified in emergency medicine, and I've been converted my whole practice into sharing about mind-body medicine and self-healing. We're going to be using a really powerful practice today that repatterns your brain to release those residues of fear, of separation, of anxiety, where I'm, I don't have what I need, I'm not okay, like the you know running from the tiger, where your body gets triggered by maybe the smallest of things, or right now there are some pretty big things going on that could be triggering you into that anxiety pattern. This is a way to neutralize that so that instead of living from fear, you can live from clarity and awareness. We're at a pivotal time right now to create our world from a very different space and for each of us to access our awareness instead of living from fear will allow us to truly create a world um, beyond what we've ever imagined. So welcome to everyone who's here live. I love um, hearing where you're tuning in from. I know there are people all over the world here. We are now broadcasting to um, a few different places at once with this new uh, technology I'm using. So so far, so good. I'm really excited about that, and we're reaching more and more people. So, welcome to Mind Body TV. I'd love to hear um, where you're tuning in from. Uh, we've got people from <laughs> Commence the Tapping. We will. This is a powerful way to move energy through your body and actually repattern these brain states. I'll explain a little bit of the medical science <laughs> behind that. Um, and also, yes, we will do some guided tapping through this. Yes, Amanda, I'm looking forward to today's EFT session. Men, men Simran, EFT for repeated illness. Okay, Patty, hello from Florida. Rita, hello. And hello from North Carolina. I've been experiencing a big increase in anxiety. So I did a video the other day about this where there can be a lot of unconscious patterns that can create anxiety, heart racing symptoms, and even illness, like stress-related illness, headaches, uh, bowel problems, um, chest pain, neck pain, all kinds of things, even though you don't register that you're stressed even though you're not consciously feeling anxiety or fear or even concern with what's going on globally or what's going on in your life, but that there are patterns in your brain hardwired throughout your system that unless we do something to neutralize them, they're on automatic pilot and information is already registering that can trigger you into anxiety, depression, or physical illness. Um, so you can read, you can watch on YouTube that video I did. It was an interview with Rena uh, Hedeman. It was posted the other day. You can go onto my YouTube channel for that. But we're going to be going deeper into some of this today. Hi um, from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Jerry has headaches. Uh, Lisa, I love your work. <laughs> Liz from Cambridge, UK. Beautiful. From Facebook in California. All right, we're going to get started. Maine, one of my favorite places. All right, everybody. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here live. Uh, we will be going into a lot of these different things. So first, I'm going to explain a little bit um, why we're talking about this. We literally have an opportunity right now to create our world from a deeper space. Will we continue to live from fear or will we begin to live from truth, from love, from unity, from each of us being in our harmony? And for me, it's really about taking responsibility for myself and what's going on inside my body, harmonizing what's happening in my system, which has been shown medically to support your physical health. In fact, EFT tapping, what we're going to be doing today has been shown to raise your IgA levels, their markers of your immune system, to up to 125%. This is a component in your bloodstream, your immune system, that fights against viruses, bacteria, infection, and keeps you healthy. So there are many ways this affects us physically. It's not just that you'll feel lighter or feel better 
or feel energy moving, you actually are affecting your body physically. Um, and at this time where we've had kind of a hard wiring to be in fear, we have the opportunity to change that and let ourselves connect with who am I? What is my life about? What do I want to choose in this new world we're emerging into? You don't need to go back to the automatic default patterns where I don't have a choice. I have to do this. You can actually begin to create your life from a deeper space. Okay. So um, one of the ways EFT works is it's giving new information to a part of your brain called the amygdala. And the amygdala is where these patterns of stress and fight or flight are registered. With stress, your cortisol levels are going to go up. Um, all kinds of inflammatory markers are going to go up. These have been linked to every major chronic illness that we've seen in medicine. This underlying inflammatory pattern is kind of the start with cancer, with bowel disease, with infection. There's a lot of inflammation that can actually overwhelm the system. Um, chronic pain syndromes. And also when we... Um, Re we release those patterns and neutralize them. It's not just about turning off the alarm, but we didn't actually address the fire. It's actually about getting clarity so we know what is required. We're not ignoring symptoms. We're not ignoring any true alarm or awareness of what needs to be addressed in our life. We're just not coming from the automatic fight or flight re reaction patterns of fear. So what we've seen with this is uh, markers for health, endorphins, oxytocin, inflammation goes down. Endorphins, oxytocin go up, inflammation goes down, cortisol goes down. We'll see a reversal of this with um, the tools I'm sharing in mind body medicine and specifically what we're going to do today with EFT tapping. So I want to hear about you. Have you had problems with anxiety, pain, um, sleep disturbance, um, or even just really being overrun with, I'm so worried, I don't know how my life's going to go in the future, uh, or fear about the virus, things that are really um, hijacking your attention. We're going to bring up some general things, but you can apply this to specifically what's going on in you. Now, I have a workshop coming up Monday, and I'll send the invite here, um, where we'll go much deeper into this and look specifically at resolving these patterns at deeper and deeper levels. But for this broadcast today, we are going to do a touch in and you will very likely feel this throughout your entire body. The link for the workshop is drkimd.com forward slash workshop. It's free. It is recorded. So if you're not able to be there Monday, you can still register and it will send you some um, really powerful mind body tools up front and you can watch the recording, but you'll get a lot out of it if you do attend live on uh, Monday. Okay. So let's start with EFT tapping. So we're sending new information to the brain to turn off that reactivity, the memories that maybe are like subconscious memories you've had in your life of fear, abandonment, inadequacy, shame, um, this even neutralizes patterns. We do carry patterns in our system, communications in our system, even from before our own lifetime, meaning in our heritage and our lineage, we've seen DNA changes linked to stressful experiences get passed down from generation to generation. That means if you've had struggles with uh, money, but you're like, hey, I've never had lack of money. I didn't live through the Great Depression. Why am I so um, adamantly frugal? Or why am I so afraid it's going to run out? What is this pattern? It actually might go beyond your own lifetime. Or you've had challenges in relationships and love or sexuality. It may be something that happened sexually or with an abandonment or who knows, way back there before you were even born, that actually the memory of that gets passed in your DNA. This is not something conventional medicine has had much of a handle on. I have seen how many chronic physical illnesses can manifest from these patterns, even if you have no reason to be sick. When we simply look at you as a physical separate entity and we don't consider the whole universe of energies that affect you, it can be a quite a conundrum to understand why you're sick and help you get better. This is one way we're just going to begin to open the doorway for you to become more conscious and allow the clearing of these patterns. 
known and unknown. Okay, so fibromyalgia, inflammation, IBS. All right, we're going to start here, sleep disturbances. We're going to start in the karate chop point. Now, I want you to tap on this point gently. doesn't have to be banging away. You can do both of these together. You can do one side or the other. It's absolutely fine. And just breathe in and breathe out. You're giving new information to your brain. You're harmonizing your nervous system. And even if all you did was say, I love you, I love you, I love you, it's okay to feel what you're feeling now. Even if all you did was, Kim, I love you, or hey, body, how are you doing? What's going on in there? This is a major shift in your neurology. So just breathing in, relax your shoulders. Breathing out, relax your shoulders. Okay, so I want you to start in the beginning. What is your check-in? Do you feel tightness in your chest? Is your breathing fluid? Are you able to breathe all the way down to your pelvis? Are you feeling like, yeah, 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 get to the thing. I, I've got to fix this. I don't have time for this. What is she talking about? A speeding up where it's impossible for you to actually be still for even a moment. What's your experience right now? And then I want you to gauge from zero to 10, how severe is the disturbance? Physical pain, worry about what's going on, anxiety, depression, um, worry about your kids, like whatever the disturbance may be, physical, mental, or emotional. One out of 10, I'd like to hear. Rachel said, I've had severe anxiety and panic. I was put on beta blockers for it. Yeah, so that like, got the trigger going on at the amygdala, sending the signal to your body, and you're just interrupting the signal from affecting your heart, which is all well and good, except that it's still affecting everything else in your body, and you're still under that fight or flight response. It will affect your perception as well. So what else can we do to look at the base of what's going on? I feel in my heart this is not serving me, and I don't like the side effects. But Let's see how this goes with you. Would regular EFT help this? Yes is my answer in short, but we can look at this more deeply, um, you know, if we want to, I have different resources online, um, but let's see what you do today <laughs> and, and what comes up. So we've got seven, nine, anxiety at a level of seven, seven with a very tight body and inner nervousness. Good. All right. So everyone check in with yourself. Know what your number is. Where am I now? 10, anger, rage, panic, <sighs> anxiety of eight feeling stuck in fight or flight, even though everything is fine with chronic fatigue syndrome. All right, another couple eights. All right, so we're gonna tap on this card on a chat point. Deep breath in through the nose. Good. Exhale, relax your shoulders. When you relax your shoulders, your breath comes through to your belly and you actually turn off the fight or flight response and all the chemistry associated with that. So just that alone, relaxing your shoulders and letting your breath come through your belly changes your neurology. So you're gonna repeat after me out loud if that's available to you. Even though I have all this stress, symptoms, and anxiety, I choose to love myself fully. Good. Yes, sometimes the tapping can make the number go up because energy comes up that's been suppressed. It's okay. Even though I have all this stress, symptoms, panic, I choose to be at peace now. Feel your body. Bring your awareness to your body. Even though there's so much intensity and it's overwhelming, I choose to be present in peace. Okay, inner eye. So just neutralizing what's coming up, inner eye. All this stress and anxiety. Breathing, breathing, let it work on you. Exhale, outer eye. Noticing what's coming up in my body. Under the eye. 
physically, mentally, and emotionally good. Under the eye. I don't want to feel this. On the chin. Pain, anxiety, stress. <sighs> Under the collarbone. Fatigue beyond anything I've imagined. You could substitute with your own words if you'd like, but it, it won't matter. You'll still receive the benefit, even if it's not too specific right now. Under the arm. So this is under the collarbone, right in that fleshy area. Underneath the armpit. It's overwhelming to be in my body right now. Let everything go. <sighs> Top of the head, last point right here. Noticing these symptoms, this pain, and this fear. Okay, we're going to do a little more. Inner eye, starting to tune in to what I'm actually feeling. Outer eye. And it's all just too much. Under the eye. I want to resist it with everything I've got. Under the eye. I mean, under the nose. This idea that I just have to escape this. On the chin. It's unbearable for me. Under the collarbone, feeling helpless or powerless. Under the arm, what if I just surrender to what I'm feeling right now? Ugh. Let the breath come. Sometimes tears come. It's yawning. It doesn't matter. Top of the head. I wonder what's possible when I presence what's happening in me. Good. All right, let everything release. Let everything relax. Take a big deep breath in through the nose. Relax your physical body. Let everything go. Good. Now tune in. Bring your attention to your physical body. Feel your butt on the seat. Feel your shoulders move. How are you feeling right now on a scale of 1 to 10? And specifically referent to what was coming up so loudly at the beginning. When we came in, there's a lot of frenetic energy. <gasps> what are we doing? Oh, I hope she gets to it soon. The impatience, the inability we have to just sit with ourselves, to just presence our own energy, and sometimes how much of a urge to escape it, to change it, to fix it, to get distracted and occupied and do something. So that can really be overwhelming. Thank you for sitting with that. Uh, Rachel said, reduce down to a four and tears, a six and feeling very heavy. Now, there's three things that will happen. You're either allowing a lot of energy to release and the number will go down because it's it's neutralizing uh, or you feel maybe nothing, in which case we're going to still do some more and feel what you feel physically. If nothing's coming up, what do I feel physically? Here's my shoulders. Move them around. Here's my butt. Okay, attention there. It will anchor your attention in your body. The third thing, it can get increased. What's happening? Oh my gosh, I'm doing it wrong. This is bad. No, 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 no. When it increases, that is all the suppressed energy that you put a lot of energy to hold in, hold in, hold in, coming to the surface. You're allowing it to begin to move. That is a good thing. Five slow breaths can be all that's required. And let's do a little more tapping to let it move even further, which I've never seen it not. So let that happen. Good. Down to a four, six up to a seven, more peace. I'm down at least three points. Elisa, um, three or four and cried the whole time. Beautiful. Uh, Patty, I feel the same. Good. So tune in physically, relax your shoulders and feel your physical body. Cheryl, an eight to a four. Good. Karina, I feel more tired and drained. Good. So like 10 long, slow, deep breaths. If you can get supine lying down on the bed, that will be even better. Or legs up on the wall in your, if you're in your office or something, legs up on the wall, 10 breaths. 
It's a reboot. Let your body have it. Do not be afraid if you feel fatigued or drained or if you feel, quote unquote, worse. It's just intensified. Good. I was a nine. Now I'm a four. I feel better from a 10 to a five or a six. Sadness, anger, tightness in my chest is there, but the rest of my body feels relaxed. Sadness came up in tears. Okay, beautiful. Sadness and shame, lots of tears, and I feel calm now. Beautiful. All right. Norma has a habit of holding her breath for years. When do you inhale? When you're tapping Oops. and taking and talking out loud. <laughs> Doesn't come naturally anymore. Well, that's okay. You can whisper it so it's not taking too much breath and breathe yourself through what you're saying out loud. Always the breath. All right, we're going to go a little bit more. Inner eye. I wonder what it would take for me to let this energy move. Inhaling. Ah, outer eye. To actually presence my body now. Under the eye. Am I strong enough to do that? Am I powerful enough to presence this? Under the nose. I've been taught it's wrong and bad, and I have to escape this. On the chin, all of these ideas and beliefs. Under the collarbone. It's okay for me to witness them and call them out. Under the arm. It's just energy. Top of the head. I am not my physical body. Inner eye. I am not this physical form. Outer eye. I am pure consciousness. Under the eye. I am an infinite being observing this physical experience. Under the nose. What would it take for me to choose to be present and just breathe? on the chin just for a moment, nothing to do. Under the collarbone, letting my system settle down. Inhaling, releasing what I've been holding, known and unknown. Top of the head. That's been costing me so much energy. Okay, we're going to do a little more. Breathing here. Inner eye, it's been unthinkably hard. Outer eye, living in fear. Under the eye, powerlessness. Under the nose, like it's not okay, and I'm not okay. And the chin, there's always so much to do, do, do. I've got to go, go, go. Ugh. Under the collarbone, this idea that I have to keep it together or else. Under the arm, what if I loosen up around that? What's actually possible? Top of the head. Is that even true for me? Good. And one last one. I wonder what's actually possible and what it would take to let that in. Good. In breath. Let it go. Okay, great. Robin, I feel the same, but tears. That was from before. But that's okay because that's energy moving. Be willing to feel more. We are taught to try to feel less. Any symptom you've got, the doctor's trying to try to make it go away. 
at all costs, let's not have you feel. But what if I could sit with everything unconditionally? Then I could be present and have awareness. And I could respond from my truth and clarity instead of reacting mind programs. Mandy, eight to a three. And noticing tightness in the pelvis. Good. So breathe into that. Cat, I started crying and I can't stop. Well, it will stop, but don't require it to be different. This is the main key. Wow, I'm noticing more. Oh, there's tension in my pelvis. Okay, here I am. Put your hand on your heart and breathe. And you can speak to your body. Body, it's okay to feel what we're feeling. Take 10 breaths into that space in your pelvis. Facebook user, I'm mad. Stuart, seven to five. Joe Spice, eight to six. I still feel too much. So tapping on that, the idea this is too much, too much, too much. I shouldn't feel this. I don't want to feel this. This is too much. Just noticing. All right, this is what's going on in me, this idea. Good, under the eye. Why is it going up? <laughs> I'm feeling more. This idea under the nose, this idea, I, I don't want to feel things on this chin. Feeling things is scary. Good, under the collarbone. Being out of control is scary. Under the arm, good to operate in clarity. I must release control. Control is fear top of the head. What if I can let go and allow life, allow life to move through me? Someone in Facebook is saying, I missed the first round. Good. Be big deep breath. But this is exactly what I've needed this morning. I didn't know what's going on, but I did the second round and it addressed exactly what I've been feeling this morning. I'm numb to fixing numbers on, and the intensity though. All right, good. More calm, six to a three. Lots of yawning. Good, so yawning, tears. A lot of that is energy moving. You'll feel it. All right. <laughs> so if more things come up, well, if all you did was put your hands on your heart and say, body, I love you. I love you. I love you. Or you can practice. It's okay to feel what you're feeling now. It's okay to feel what you're feeling now. Treat your body with compassion and be in the presence of stillness as the observer so that you can awaken to clarity. Like I said, not be in this never-ending cycle of <laughs> avoidance because that's what most of us are doing. And then we wonder why the body's sick or why life isn't working out. Great, Jenya. Thank you so much. Nicole, what if we hate our body? You know, you can tap on that because that's something a lot of people will tell you like, you got to change that. Don't hate your body. That's the worst thing you can do. But where is that going to get you if that's actually what's resonating? A lot of what people will say is, isn't this negative affirmation? I don't want to affirm the negative. I got to be positive. Think of all the energy it takes for you to try to be positive in this space of thinking that the negative has so much power that you have to work to overcome it. Ah! You drive yourself crazy and you'll stay busy for the rest of your life. So if it doesn't, act, it's not true, it has no power. So you got to ask, right? This is true. Now you won't know if you're in the mind, but if you just kind of tap to neutralize things, you'll be aware. Is this even true for me that I have to do that thing? Is this even true for me that I'll never get better? What if I could release that idea? So you can tap just on one little area, breathe in, breathe out, and say, hey, body, how are you? <laughs> and ask your body a question like, is this even true for me? Or who would I be without that belief? When you do this, you'll immediately feel the resonance, the consciousness, the frequency of that question. And that is the answer. The mind thinks you got to figure out the answer, but it's actually the frequency of the question is where the solution lies. And so that I find my mind drifts away from the script. It's hard to stay focused on your words. Don't worry about that. When you come out of mind, which is what we're doing here, 
there's a lot integrating. So you don't actually need to be focused the way you might think you do. Okay. Yeah, Nicole, that's, uh, there's a lot of intensity and there is there is power you have. It's just you're getting distracted by the mind and giving it a lot more power than it actually needs to have. Mm. Robin saying, I love you to my body makes me feel so much sadness and tears. Great. That's energy moving. That's an opening to love. So don't think it's wrong. Just let that energy flow. Okay, someone in Facebook is saying, I feel like in the past few months, I've really curbed my anxiety toward my illness, but the symptoms are still here and the pain still persists. How do I move through forward, ridding myself of the symptoms? This is a great question. Okay, so what we've seen scientifically is that the body can physically have a lag time, meaning you come into a higher frequency of, ah, oh, I feel light. I'm no longer in fear, but your body's still like triggering away with old messages, old programs, old brain states, that's okay. And I'm not saying ignore it. Address your body, nurture your body, support your body through it. But do, don't do let it distract you from, oh, wait, why didn't this change? Because the point of using EFT is not, I got to make this thing change. I got to make it go away. What you resist persists. The point of using EFT, I will invite you to, is I use this to love and nurture my body. That is what brings you into a higher frequency, and that is exactly what lets the physical body begin to resonate differently. And we have seen medically, this is able to resolve virtually every disease known to man. And I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying that based on decades of evidence-based research, when we look at the placebo effect, the mind's ability to allow dissolution through this communication system in the body of our psycho neuro endocrine immunology, all of it's connecting and communicating constantly. Those shifts and changes can lead to cellular health or the repression of that, which leads to disease. So if you're allowing, oh, I feel lighter, there's not so much fear. Oh, but why isn't the problem gone? Why isn't the problem gone? Just see if you can keep bringing your attention back to what's possible here to let the body come into through that gap time come into the higher resonance it can take a little minute but if it gets your attention back to oh no it really is hopeless and serves as evidence to feed the limitation you're not letting it do the work so let it be evidence of yes i'm fully alive i'm witnessing loving and nurturing supporting my body i'm more clear on what's required here Sometimes it's just presence and breathing. Sometimes it's let me drink more water. Sometimes it is maybe a medication or a procedure or a supplement. Do not be in resistance to what you think it's supposed to look like. Mm. And don't be in attachment to what the, um, the timeline is supposed to be. Yeah, Nicole, I know there's a lot of heavy energies that have sort of like hijacked your thought processes. So there's resistance. All you can do is embrace what is as it is. If I am in devotion, unconditionally willing to embrace what is as it is, I'm no longer making myself wrong. I'm no longer making what's happening wrong. That is a major point for empowerment and awakening. It's a higher frequency consciousness. Um, I'm going to go much deeper into this in our workshop on Monday. DrKimD.com forward slash workshop. We'll do some EFT. Um, we will do a lot of other mind-body tools. And when you register for the workshop, there are some mind-body tools that we'll send you to practice with right now. Super easy to integrate, just a little three times a day for a minute. Um, but it will begin to create changes in your brain right now. So when we do the workshop, you're even more receptive, even more perceptive, even more beginning to connect in unity in your body. And you'll move forward from there. It's a free workshop. Um, if you can't be there live, you can still register and you'll receive the invitation and the recording. DrKimD.com forward slash workshop. And... <laughs> Uh, and, and, and I will meet you in there and we'll go a lot deeper. Jennifer Scott said, what's your live schedule? We do this every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain and we'll be broadcasting in the Mind Body community in Facebook. Today, we're also broadcasting live in YouTube and live uh, on my Facebook um, page. 
Dr. Kim DeRamo, but uh, for sure, we always have this in the mind-body community. Um, and that's really where the conversation is and where questions are asked and will assist you more deeply with this work. All right, Anne said, when I'm not focused, I don't feel, not yawning or tears, like when I'm present. Yeah, so keep your awareness in your body. Doesn't mean you have to focus on my words or the meaning or I don't know. Keep your presence in your body. If all you do is feel your body, breathe in and out, feel the breath flowing through you physically, there's a harmonization that can happen. All right. Nicole, how do I face myself when it's so intense? This is the moment we all meet when it's a, it's a, it's a will I be the source I'm looking for or will I keep looking outside myself, hoping someone will save me from meeting myself fully. And in one way or another, we all meet that moment. It doesn't mean it has to be suffering. And I'm sorry, it's been so intense of, of kind of where you still held these residues. Um, but you're doing great in, in kind of navigating this commitment to show up for yourself. If you can focus on the devotion, um, I am uh, this space of lightness even though I'm having this experience, even though it's intense, even though it feels like crap and every cell in my body wants to run, huh, what would it take for me to open anyway? That's really the energy of it. Elisa, thank you so much for this. I really needed help with releasing this fear, anxiety, and depression. It's affected my life and health greatly. Felt like I might need to rewatch this a few times and let it all in. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. A lot of people are reporting. Uh, resolution. Thank you. Awesome. You've helped me so much. Beautiful. Jennifer. Okay, good. So um, I'm at drkimd.com. I shared the link for the workshop. There is a quiz on the front page that will be a little more prescriptive for you in what's going on in your system and how you can allow that to unwind and release I want to reiterate, when you use EFT tapping or any mind-body tools I'm sharing, if you, so I had a, an osteopathic um, doctor, a mentor of mine who told me, if you show up to your patient like you have five minutes, it will take you all day. If you show up to your patient like you have all day, it will take five minutes. This is the principle of what you resist persists. And when you're in attachment, that's resistance. So when you're doing EFT, to make yourself feel better. You're doing EFT to make the symptoms go away. And what I'll hear or what you might say to yourself, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. That's because your intention is, I got to make this go away. So you're actually creating the resistance that you're trying to move away from. If you instead approach your body, I am here all day for you. I love you. What do you need? What's required? to love and nurture your body in this moment without agenda or attachment, I will guarantee you, because this is the physics, your body will respond. It may not be in 10 seconds, although for a lot of people, you will immediately feel that. That's a different resonance. It's an unconditional commitment of I, will, I choose to embrace all parts of me. Your body will respond to that. It's not the same as, okay, yeah, 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 I'm giving you all this attention. What the heck is wrong? Why didn't you get better yet? You know, you can imagine like a child. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're not going to respond to that because that is not your nature. The nature of the body is one of love, opening, and harmony. It does not want to hold on to these energies or residues or past traumas or fear. And if you can approach the body... Like my mentor, Donald Hankinson, told me, like, you've got all day. I am here for you. What's needed? Here we are. There's a presence to that. There's a consciousness to that. Your body will feel it. All right, everybody, so much love to you. I'll be here every Wednesday live at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, definitely subscribe if you're on YouTube and hit the bell. Share this with three people you love because this kind of Awareness and connection with yourself is exactly what creates a conscious world, abundant, thriving, filled with love. This is what's needed, is each of us meeting ourselves, not battling what's happening out there or trying to make change in the world. This is where the change happens, is within me. 
And I'm willing to show up to myself fully. Share this with some people that you love and make the world a brighter place today. Join me in the Mind Body community and um, I'll see you live for the workshop on Monday. If that resonates with you, drkimd.com forward slash workshop. All right, great. Lots of love and hearts coming through. And I really, really appreciate that. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for subscribing and lots of love to you. Bye.